Halloween 6, or Halloween, or just Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers is a mess of a film, and okay, both cuts of the film, both of the theatrical and producer's cut, are both okay and messy. I will be talking about both, and which cut I think was the better, and which I think was the worse. Are we doing this for the same with the Rob Zombies Halloween, two Halloween movies? Those two movies have different cuts for some reason. We'll get to those when we get to those. But yeah, this movie, it seemed to have a lot of, like, pre-production hell as well. Like, Halloween Fight for Rushed, this movie felt felt like it was just going through hell like for years for six years michael myers has come back to kill this year halloween begins early on friday september 29th evil will be unmasked forever halloween the curse of michael myers but the weinsteins were behind the miramax thing or whatever and obviously with harvey weinstein being outed as what he is he, they made it hard for some of the actresses and many of these actresses who played kara strode who admitted in a 25 years of terror that the weinsteins let it be known that she was almost wasn't cast because she was too thin and a pointy chin that might seem like a standard you better have thick skin if you want to make it in hollywood but yeah okay that, that which is why Kara keeps covering her chin for no good reason and speaks what became one of the most epic clusterfucks in a horror movie production history so with production hell and with this uh Kara actress dealing with you know harvey weinstein being weinstein it wasn't good for like some of the actors and behind the scenes people basically again for the mess of the f of both cuts made sense and why it was messy because of, of of stuff like this and and script issues and just everything about everything basically oh wow quentin tarantino was going to write a script oh wow what the heck okay hold on hold on, hold on. it makes sense how concerned Tarantino was close to the Weinsteins at the time, thanks to Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction. Uh, however, Tarantino more acted as a go-between for the Weinsteins. He was offered the chance to rewrite the script that they had, which featured Michael as a homeless man. What? They had him as a fucking homeless man? <laughs> if they liked his writing, then maybe they let him direct. However, his preference, as well as Tarantino's, was simply to start over and create something closer to the spirit of the first film. So Weinsteins later told Akkad they, they wanted to go with someone who else has actual relief. But yeah, there's uncertainty. This is just rumors, but there's some uncertainty if Tarantino was supposed to write, but or rewrite that's interesting what are wonder what a tarantino halloween film would would have been like whether he wrote or directed it maybe both but tarantino's he's a director that likes to make movies about long forgotten like film like memorabilia stuff like samurai movies all that stuff like movies and film genres that people have long forgotten about just bringing it back up now he's he's you know that type of director so probably would have directed halloween curse of michael myers but he definitely would have wrote in it apparently the title curse of michael myers was never meant to be taken seriously the writer one of the writers made it up as a joke about their cursed production which is very true the script was simply titled halloween 666 there is no official subtitle he later added the crystal microphone as a joke uh, but producers didn't get it they liked the subtitle and ran with it halloween 666 probably would have been better in my opinion thinking about it now halloween 666 crystal michael myers well at least they did the whole return revenge and curse thing the three trilogy right the thorn trilogy the curse i mean the revenge um, the, oh god i'm messing this up return revenge and curse you know that it makes sense one thing i will give praise to this movie for is Paul rudd's appearance he is playing a older version of tommy doyle however this article says that this is technically Paul rudd's first movie halloween, halloween 6 was his second movie the first being clueless however technically he filmed Halloween 6 first yeah he did do clueless and Halloween 6 side by side with this and now for years Rudd claimed to claim that he hated 6 and preferred not to talk about it now that he's an Avenger he's cool with it again telling when he first saw Halloween 6 he remembered thinking oh god the movie's not good and was really bummed out started making it he remembered thinking oh this is the one that's going to be different and that and he enjoyed making it quotation marks I thought it was really really fun but then I thought oh god are people going to think I'm a joke are we going to work as an actor after this it comes out I've since changed my tune I love it a franchise that has lasted that long and he could have been more happier and say that his first movie was halloween yeah so i guess he hated the production of halloween 6 but he even tried to attend a couple of halloween 6 20th anniversary reunion panel last year but oh last year oh, that's article's fucking old but basically he hated it working on it but was like you know what i forgive it he was in a halloween movie whatever so that was cool it, it was not my first saw the movie i saw a pod road like ant-man i was like oh shit your boy ant-man's in this movie huh 
He looks so young. <laughs> like, Power is like, what, 51? He still looks the same, honestly, if you ask me. Obviously, he has, like, wrinkles here and there, but man, to him and some actors, just don't fucking age. You gotta use something, right? No way, that's just El Naturo. Nah, I'm just being just super jealous right now. This is fun. They even try to look for at least the original Tommy, who played in the first movie. So the problem was that Brian Andrews, who played Tommy in the first Halloween, didn't have an agent. They couldn't find him, either to offer him the part or at least throw a bone in the form of some kind of cameo. His loss was Proud Rod's game. So at least they tried. Whoever the agents or whatever, they're hey, let's, let's, let's look for the original Tommy Dwyer actor. But, you know, Brian Andrews is probably living that normal life. Probably they want to be in Hollywood or something like that. So they reshot the, a third of the film after test screening audience then liked the ending. So again, the, in the 25 years of terror, six producers Paul Freeman and director Joe Chaplin changed the script daily, apparently, often without warning or uh, explanation, leaving many in the casting crew, crew confused. Freeman's handling of the production, including sometimes sending crew home right before a crucial scene, needed to be shot, resulting in a mess of a finished product, uh, product very evident. Dimension had to set up and take over production and force Freeman's rework material to be reshot. Oh yeah, that's a sad news. But when they had to reshoot scenes, Donald Pleasant sadly passed away by that point. They had a replacement with the body double. Yeah, it sucks to know. Uh, on a side note, it sucks to know this was Donald Pleasant's last portrayal of Dr. Loomis and it ended on a on a whimper, sadly. The oh god, even uh Akata and Dimension had a like legal battle over which cut of the film to be released, but Dimension won, pleasing no one and confusing the audience in the process, which is the theatrical cuts, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna say theatrical cut. Oh god, here we go. There were so 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 many different endings. So there's there's a list by the way here. I mean, there's like oh there's like one, two, three, four. See a lot, right? There's like technically six endings of these four. So this is like bullet points list. So I'm gonna read the first one. Originally Loomis was going to be the surprise twist death at the end of the film. After the battle of all battles between Loomis and Dr. Wynn. Oh god, I forgot about that. So Dr. Wynn or who are his old friend for the first movie, by the way, where Loomis is walking out of a building and he's talking to this guy. That's Dr. Wynn. And apparently this really just not important, like insignificant character apparently is the leader and cult leader of the thorn mark thing on myers this character who no one cares about is like this is leader now anyway that's like the messy production stuff anyways when was dead and michael was again missing he was stops and asks why not me and michael at which point the ship appears out of the darkness let's zoom his throats with a huge slash of his knife that ending probably would have pissed off a lot of halloween fans of how beloved he is that would have been outraged and another version loomis discovers that carl was dead in the bus station where jamie had in the baby earlier in the film only to find Danny bloody and bloody and holding a knife in the baby. Wait, who the fuck was he? You mean Tommy? I'm gonna assume that's Tommy. So, having Tommy be the killer because of the traumatic that he experienced as little now experiencing again when face to face with Myers again. Okay, in another version, Wayne gets a, into a helicopter to escape. The carnage as Smith grows. He thinks he's got the baby in his back satchel. Doesn't realize that it was too late that Do Tommy has taken the baby and put a bomb in its place. The helicopter win go kaboom as Tommy, Kara, and the kids make their escape. Sounds like an into an action film, right? The like the hero in the action film replaces whatever with the bomb and it goes kaboom and they walk off while the explosion happens at least that's what i'm thinking this would have been fine the power of ruins ending which i'm really referring to as the tommy magic acorns the version that would end up in a producer's cut i didn't mind having Loomis take on the curse the implication that he would not become michael's protector rather than destroy was a great twist just to explain the different endings of the theatrical and the producer's cut now the theatrical had tommy doyle faces fears and beat myers in a fight with a little bit of extra needle help but you know he beats him to a bloody bloody mess and mask taken off and loomis talks to them outside they leave and the movie ends with micro micro with myers still alive in the mask on the ground and the producer's cut like i just read here the mark will be passed on to loomis uh, implying that he will become michael's protector rather than destroyer Or 
prayer. Again, as I said, it's a great twist, but Donald Pleasance did sadly pass away, and would have been interesting to see where that would have went, but even the both cuts, again, are okay. They're really messy. It's uh, a lot of endings, honestly. Let's talk about the two different cuts. So the theatrical cut definitely is more influenced by the Weinsteins, where there are these weird, like, edits of Scream. Like, it's sprinkled throughout the whole movie of these, like, weird, like, screams and edits and flashes and cuts to a scene. That wasn't necessary. It's just fucking dumb. However, six is the bloody one, which I love. There's a scene where Kara's father, his head explodes because he's in a laundromat and boom, it goes kaboom. It explodes. That was awesome. And the bloody Myers and everything bloody about it. That was cool. Uh, Jamie, she dies very brutally as well. So, again, taking characters from the previous one, killing the beginning, that's kind of a trope for some reason. We're a piss of a lot of people. But yeah, that happens. And then it is just confusing as well. There's a lot of like, so the theatrical, not only that, it feels like it's missing scenes. Like things are being placed out for some reason. Things are being cut out and placed in or being reshot and replaced. It feels like that. And then in the producer's cut, uh, the movie feels more of like, kind of like the original where there's no blood. There's a lot more scenes of Myers stalking in the background. Again, consistent thing in the series. We see more of, again, Myers in the background stalking, which is great stuff. Stalking Kara because she's a strode. How's this different now just uh forgot to mention that the house is very different in case i just forgot to mention that uh, we, we get more there's more of loomis in the producer's cut there's very little of loomis in the theatrical cut however in the producer's cut there's a lot more loomis and his friend uh, dr win who again is an insignificant character in the first one and they make him to be a co-leader of michael because uh, i don't know i don't know oh, speaking of it both films they have yeah there's this cult thing right there's like this cult following that like from a very young age they they get infants and put a mark on them so they can kill like their relatives or family members and and oh, so in the beginning of this movie, it turns out Michael raped his own sister? In order to give birth to a baby, so he could kill her and then kill his baby again, and the cycle will continue over and over again. And that's what this cult does. And it's like, okay, weird cult stuff. I'm not a big fan of it, but I don't hate it as well. It's just like, why are you trying to have Michael be in this cult thing? It, it ruins everything, basically. Honestly, it ruins everything. So, both of that, it's in both movies. That's dumb. But yeah, we get more Loomis shots, starts to make sense as to why Loomis is where he is. So, with in the theatrical cut, Loomis is kind of there. Like, how did he, how the hell does he get here? However, in the producer's cut, it makes sense. The scenes continue for much longer. It makes sense as to why Paul Rudd meets Donald Pleasant's character. And uh, oh, speaking of Donald Pleasant, I like the fact that he's retired, right? After the events of five, he's now a retired old man. And like, you know what? Let's do this one last time. I guess that's a coup. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying, but you can tell he's limping. He's old. He got plastic surgery to get the mark, burn mark off his face. And he, you can tell his character, he's just tired. And he wants this Michael Myers to be gone. He wants to be over. But he gets brought back in by Dr. Wynn and Paul Rudd's character and in doing so uh, at least in the producer's cut he not only he hates the fact that now he has to protect Michael and not destroy him so yeah he's a tired old man who gets brought back in again kind of like uh, like the Winchesters from Supernatural but that's the most interesting part probably the best part of Halloween and just like Loomis as a character he's just great and he's, he's he's the best part honestly of every movie that he's in basically oh, I do find it weird that he, like Myers wore like the, the costume thing like the man in black did from the five and the any shot of six just thought that was weird so if they went with this producer's cut idea he wouldn't wear the, the white mask and overalls kind of thought it'd be weird but as to which cut i prefer i definitely prefer the producer's cut it feels more of like the original movie it explains a lot more plot holes in the theatrical cut and it sets up a interesting twist that never gets told because of the passing of donald pleasance and theatrical cut as why i don't prefer that the weird screaming cut edit flash edits things not being explained being plot holes less of loomis and kind of more of a messy film even though both films are messy and convoluted as fuck with thorn stuff i don't think it's better than five but clearly not better than the other ones obviously due to just production hell and curse of the curse of you know this production and this movie there's no way this movie could have been good it seems like there's too many cooks in in the kitchen and and, and this is what we got halloween 6 the curse of michael myers or the mess of michael myers it should, it should be called but yeah overall halloween slash halloween 6 the curse of michael myers depending on what depending on which cut you watch is okay it's not bad it's not good it is just a-okay next day 27th will be halloween h2o